it seems, have basically built an underground forest because of how scared I am about this. Could just be I'm paranoid, but it seems like a real threat. Therefore, I wanted to do this to make sure to protect my investment. They're actually packed in here tight enough. I can't go very far. Maybe the little peppers could, but this thing is pretty solid. And here's why. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper. In this episode, we gotta make some progress on this root cellar. So the first thing was a harvest. A harvest of trees. As we attempt to tame this wild wilderness, we're taking a lot of the dead wood and other stuff out of here. And we want it to kind of have light coming in here, eventually grass growing up. But this ground looks pretty nice right now. Um, you can see a couple big rocks back there. But the deal is, it looks so nice right here because the kids and I just filled all these buckets with rocks. They did a lot of them, I did a couple. But all these rocks were pretty much at the surface level. If you look here, this is not gonna be a very fun place to run and play and trip and fall and land. So we're trying to clean it up a little bit as we pull out this firewood. You know, there's a lot of this type of stuff. Oh yeah, so that one will wind up in a bucket too. But it just makes it a better area to play in and we'll start kind of letting the ground build up from there with a lot less of these hard little threats, but it's amazing to me, like just how many, thanks bug. Oh, just how many rocks come into play and uh, I like it too, because moving five gallon buckets of rocks is a great opportunity to get a little bit of a workout in or we otherwise might not have one. Look at this, five, 10, 15, 20, 24 of them, I think. That's a lot of rocks. And I'll continue to store them in my rock pillar fence on the perimeter. Um, that's where I'm putting a lot of my rock collection right now.
since we're using those trees for the support system for our plywood top, the next step was to get them all screwed in place so they could hold the plywood up and then trimmed off so everything is flush so that the plywood can rest completely level for when I pour the concrete. As I progress on this project as well, it's not just getting this thing to be supported, it's taking care of a number of other things. One of them is if you look, there's some deeper holes around here. This, the ground just kind of settled because we were dug out farther than that. Then we put this in and we backfilled, so the ground settled there. And then here, one of the dogs dug a decent sized hole. So that's got to get filled in. We got some settling around here too, not a huge deal or difference but there is some stuff that could be added to here especially over there maybe to kind of bring it up to level so that's something i'm thinking about and my standard operating procedure just as i do with five gallon buckets of rocks and other things is to go to one of the washouts where all the stuff that kind of gets carried away by the rain washes out makes a big pile of gravel or gravel or rocks and other things and uh, just kind of do it by five gallon buckets on a hot day like this, you really work up a sweat. That's one of the reasons that, you know, homesteaders don't really need gym memberships, right? I didn't watch the video yet from an American homestead, but he's got one about why homesteaders don't need gym memberships. Why didn't I watch the video? I probably understand from living life exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> but what happened was I noticed something at my neighbor's house, and that was this. A small little tractor with a backhoe attachment in a bucket. And I thought, wow, I could take a couple scoops of some washout and have that go so much quicker than filling five gallon buckets. And not that I'm not beyond going and filling five gallon buckets if that's what I have to do. But if I don't have to, why not do it quick and easy with a blessing from another? So uh, just got stopped by my neighbors. I actually had an extension cord of his. Monster truck goes, hey, I think this is our neighbor's extension cord. I go, really? He goes, yeah, you got one like it, but it's not this one. I said, wow, and this is from a little bit ago. 
And I said, wow, that's a pretty good memory. <laughs> Brought it up to my neighbor, he recognized it and said, yeah, yeah, that's one of mine. He goes, well, he's got a better memory than us. You know, I didn't realize it was his and he didn't realize it was missing. Um, and I started to explain, I said, hey, I got some holes to fill in as I prepare for this. And he goes, and I go, normally I just kind of shovel five gallon buckets of, uh, of gravel from the washout and throw it on my trailer. And he says, but you're thinking if there's an orange machine sitting right over there. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And thankfully we've got a, uh, a good relationship with them. When we did our garboil a bit ago, we uh, blessed them with some of that. Um, they weren't beyond saying, yeah, grab it, use it, get her done quick, and we'll move forward from there. So, awesome. Um, get my snake hook out of the truck that's in the back seat. By the chickens? What do you think it is? It got in your shoe now? Whoa, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Whoa, 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 that is insane. I think it's a baby racer. Can I get it? Um, actually, this could be a baby coach whip. Let me see I was thinking head either head. racer or coach whip, but you see how that goes back to a red? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I could tell you. Either way, it's not venomous. Yeah. It's just... Wow, well, I think... I've not met baby coach whips or baby racers in person yet. I'm thinking this is a baby coach whip though. I'll have to look. I had no idea what it was. I, I might have to check with Squatchy Herper. He'd know pretty quick. Crackers and all her kids were around the rock, so I went over and peeked over and I thought it was like a eagle at first. <laughs> this is probably our first neonate either racer or coach whip, and I'm guessing coach whip. Yeah, yeah I am. Look at the back. Hey, look at the back of its tail. 
Doesn't that look coach whip like? Yeah. Wow, well hey, if this one's here, there could be more. If this is a coach whip, that's the third one in my entire life I've caught and oh, held on to. Of course, you can see my family helped me. They said, hey, here's one coming to get it. But can yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a coach whip. Oh, wow, this look at you guys. Here's a yellow duckling. It's yellow. Yes. Wow. And a uh, chicken or a duck hatch that? A duck. A duck. The keep too? Yeah. Hmm. Cool. I love it when everyone works together. Well, hey, look. Three super cute babies. <laughs> this egg was actually that chicken's egg over there. Wow, how crazy. I wasn't completely sure if this was a racer or a coach whip, just because it got kind of red there and the way it went. But we're gonna go ahead and say this is a racer, which makes more sense. They're a lot more common in this area. And I was thinking a coach whip would be slightly bigger in this too. An absolutely beautiful creature um, for just a little one. So fresh out the egg and a cool one to have around. And it'll be quite a while before this guy would even be a threat to any of our animals. So we'll be letting it go on our property. Just not in the chicken pen where we found it. Somewhere safer. That is absolutely crazy how that went down, guys. Because today's Sunday, and Friday I was thinking, you know what? I'm gonna need to ask one of my neighbors with a tractor if they can just get me a couple scoops of some stuff. And then, right after that, I see that there's another one sitting at my other neighbor's house uh, that's kind of there for a limited time. Um, and I thought, wow, I might just be able to borrow that. So then nobody else has to, you know, do the work and take time out of their day. Just allow me access to the equipment real quick. I'll get her done and move on. And then also, while I got it done, I moved this dog house out here for Blizzard. Um, built that a while ago, but built it out of oak. So it was kind of heavy. But with Mama Pepper running the thing for a moment, I was able to strap it on. And then here, um, those I all got for free from some guys who were doing some road work. Mama Pepper dropped that one off here before. And I'm kind of working on this to add a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna have that be flat. It'll be sloping away from the house still, but it'll be a, a section that's up a little bit. So periodically, I'll dump stuff behind here, dumped a little bit out of the woods, a couple different spots. And also, hey guineas, this rock here, just look at the size of that, yeah. I dropped that here as kind of the end of it, so I'll kind of taper this in. And this coming week, we might remove these two sycamores here, just because they're known to crack. I had one crack over where the uh, root cellar is gonna be, and this one's leaning over my bedroom. Not the best, right, Bug? Yeah. And then, let's see what we got going on over here by the root cellar now. Uh, like I said, I would have done it with a shovel and five gallon buckets. Um, I was planning on doing it, which is why I had to go get those five gallon buckets of rocks off the trailer and, and work with it that way. But uh, thankfully, I had a different plan, so, or a different way it worked out. Better option. I had a better option. So here we are. The gravel's coming in. I'm gonna put more in there. And I'll probably wet it too, just to kind of help it soak down and fill things. I'll still smooth this out. Then I got some on those sides. And I got a little bit more actually to add to this underground forest and a couple to cut. And once I do that, I mean, we're good to go. Um, it'll just be a matter of framing in the outside and prepping everything else. There'll be an air intake on each side um, here so that it's not stuffy down there. And I'm gonna put I think like a drain over there that runs out that way, a pipe. Wow. I should almost. I'm trying to think of, of burying this pipe here 
because I want to be able to hose things off and have it go. I wonder if I should almost dig that down right now and have that come up. Of course, I'm pouring six inches up, so it shouldn't be that hard to, to trough. Yeah, I don't need heavy equipment for that. Because I'm not going that deep. It's going to kind of come out over here. Okay. I, a lot of my stuff I wrap my mind around it as I go, rather than having every detail planned ahead of time. But this is looking good. And my underground forest is almost complete. A friend of mine said that's definitely overkill. Definitely. I'm still just going to add a little bit more, but I want to make sure that it's not underkill. I'm gonna kill it. I want it to be overkill. What you got, Bug? Snake head. Oh, you're right. I see belly scales. That's not uh, not surprising. I gotta clean up the rest of these and get them stored where they're not ground contact too. Monster truck was cleaning up some of these in the last video. Um, man, I'm really excited. I like these guys. They look good. They look good. Well, early day, probably been up since 4.30. I think it's about eight now. Even looking outside earlier, I'm like, it just looks like rain today. So there's a couple things I wanna do. Number one, oh, I don't know if I'm paranoid or what, but I'm gonna I'm put all these in there too. It just seems like the thing to do. And even if you think about, um, it, and I may go more in depth in it in a future video. A lot of homesteading and DIY problem solving with the resources you have yourself, you know, here resources being rocks, soil, trees, I mean, that's the, the natural stuff, junk pieces of stuff. A lot of homesteading, if you're frugal and thrifty, kind of almost turns into like third world living, you know what I mean by that? Um, in the midst of a first world nation. That's kind of almost what it becomes. And, you know, to do this, even I have a neighbor who, he poured a concrete lid on some stuff and he probably had 40 to 60 two by fours in there holding things up. That's kind of the American way. You run to the Home Depot, you run to the Lowe's, you run to the Menards, you run to the lumber yard and you buy some lumber, which is wood, which comes from trees. And you pay somebody for having cut down the tree and milled it. You know, for cutting it down and milling it and shipping it and storing it and having the storefront and paying the cashier. You know, all that is in your cost. Where in a third world country, to do something very similar, they'd go cut down trees to length. So, that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting down trees like, yeah, you see a lot of boards in there too, but even those boards, direct from the sawmill, save hundreds, thousands possibly. So, I am gonna drop those in there too. And then I was hoping with this soil I brought up, this fill, um, especially where that hole was, and I did have one where a dog dug a hole over here too. So I dropped some stuff here, but I was hoping that I'd kind of level it out and then wet it. Why wet it? Well, when water runs through your fill medium, it, it washes little pieces down farther and it packs it together tighter. So I wanna hopefully get this whole thing, get all those in and get this flattened. And then, then let it rain. And the rain can do some of the, some of the work that I was gonna do, so I like that. Let me get these in, and then I'm gonna check inside my my burned up shipping container where I made a mistake you shouldn't make with shipping containers. And I'm gonna see if I got some more plywood on hand that's of a similar thickness, or if I'm gonna have to go buy more. Rather than buy more, I could potentially work out a trade with one of the neighbors too. Again, how do I not spend an hour going to town? and pay a bunch if I don't need to. I, I got another idea. But let's get this in first, let's get these all cut flush, and then we'll see um, if we can level this before it starts raining.
That very well may be all the support I go with. I'm not gonna say all the support I need because I may need less support than all that. But I'm thinking that had better do it. Ha! Huh. Do you think that'll do it? Yeah. Good. Oh man, okay, let's level this out quick before it rains. And then let's see if I can get some plywood out of the shipping container. I spent some time digging out the shipping container. I accidentally lit on fire by welding something on the outside of it and the heat transferred the inside and combusted it. Uh, I got a ways to go, but I did make it to the plywood I was looking for. But here's just an example of what we're dealing with. A lot of our stuff was stored in plastic bins. Look at what happened. I mean, it just dripped down and melted like that. Some of the ones that didn't actually melt um, are just completely, well this one I guess did start melting on that corner, see that? But look at that, just completely saturated with smoke. That's supposed to be a vibrant yellow top. Here, we've got like one of the little swim things for the kids, but you can see how smoke stained it is. All sorts of, like these guys, look at that. The color now is all smoky, so I'm not even gonna put these on my kids' faces, you know? We'll just get replacements and all sorts of their shoes that we had stored up, baby car seat, their work boots, you know. Sometimes different chemicals can come in there and then you put it on your body, soaks into your skin, baby socks, baby shoes. This was one of the sad ones. This was a brand new backup one. I'm not sure if it's salvageable. You know, this is an extra pressure canner because two is one and one is none. So it's like shrink wrapped in its own plastic now. I don't know, we'll see. And it smells like just burning plastic and garbage in here. Look at this plastic just frozen. All sorts of brand new baby clothes, or well not brand new, but saved baby clothes. All sorts of stuff up here. So yeah, it's gonna be some sorting through. Um, but the plywood's behind me, so I'm gonna bring that out and get a look if I've got some all the same size. And there's a lot more work to do here, which is part of why I was uh, preparing this over here so I've got more stuff to store and then I can clear out this area and have a section to work in 
Ugh. Learning the hard way. Better than not learning at all, but it hurts. I had a couple different sheets, not what I'm looking for, but it gives you an idea where if this one came out flush to the edge, we'd have to trim every edge, and then this one, you know, is way over. So three sheets will cover, it'll look good, and that kind of gives you a better idea of what we're dealing with here. And we'll frame in the outside, and we'll go from there. Well, I did want to just double check with what I had for upstairs. I don't have the pieces I need, but I might be able to wheel and deal and work some stuff out. Um, I also wanted to make sure that everything looked right. Um, math only gets me so far because I can do math incorrectly, but when I'm able to look at it in real life, that gives me the opportunity to see it and make sure that it works. Um, I can barely get through this stuff, like there's a couple of these I can kind of squeeze between, but if I was to try to head too deep in here, I wouldn't make it very far. I'm just simply not thin enough, and I've got them at a high enough uh, frequency here that I don't think I could head through very far at all. That means I'm rather happy with this part of it. Um, I'm going to have to frame in the outside. I'm still not sure if I'm going in ground or above ground with my cedar posts. But either way, I'm going to have to prepare my pad. I'm going to have to have a couple footers in there. I'm going to have to do the rebar, frame in the outside, and get all that done before I'm ready to pour. Um, this part now makes me feel good. I just got to get the actual three sheets I'm going to use. And I'll put that together, and um, yeah, once that's in place, I'll do the rebar over the top. So, i got a couple things to do to finish this, but I'm happy with the progress I made. It's just so much darker down here right now with those plywoods up, and this kind of gives you an idea of how, just how thick these trees are. It is like an underground forest. I can barely even see the wood stuff back there. But definitely a lot darker with the plywood up there, so yeah, underground forest indeed. Definitely this is probably overkill, and that's exactly what I want, because if this fails, I, I don't even want to give it the opportunity to fail. So this should definitely take care of everything. Um, I'm glad some friends are like, yeah, overkill, don't worry about that, that'll be fine. Um, I still added a bit after they said that. It's just me. Um, but, you know, this will all be firewood and stuff when I'm done anyway. I'll unscrew it all, cut it up, bring it out. Yeah. As I was working, too, with Bugger, he's sitting there singing, Not My Way, Yahweh, <laughs> which is the shirt I have on from Sanctified Supply Company today. Check them out. The link will be in the description. Um, actually partnered with them to start making some shirts for our channel. So, excited about that and looking forward to the future. So anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see what we get back with next time. And uh, soon we may be doing a live stream gender reveal too. So uh, be prepared for that. Maybe kind of like a, an online live stream baby shower gender reveal fun time party. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Papa out. That's good.